Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ilona. I'm also a Chicago Transformations. I'm an online health and fitness coach and I'm also a bodybuilder and that's all I am. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nutritionist and I'm not a dietitian. We're gonna do something a little bit different today. We're gonna, I'm gonna see how this works out. We're gonna do something called a channel review and um, basically what I'm gonna start doing is just go through YouTube channels that I find that maybe do like what I eat in the days and training and if somebody has a large following, just kind of review, kind of review their approach and see what I think about it. So today we're gonna to look at a girl called Gabriella Whited. Here we have her Instagram. She is very slender. She's very young as well still, guys. She's only 19, so do bear that in mind. She is very young still. She has a lot of following. So here on Instagram, we can see she has 243,000 followers, followers. And on YouTube, she has even more. She has a 1.4 million followers on YouTube. Uh, the way I found her channel is by just doing a thousand calorie while I eat in a day. And I kind of stumbled across her channel. I think maybe she is like a dancer or something. It seems to be like that. But there is some interesting videos in here. And I figured we'll just take a look at some of them because she does like workouts, um, like for example, how to get abs in a week, which we know guys, you can't, you cannot get abs in a week. You cannot get toned legs in a week. This takes years and years of work. So what I'm going to try and do is to see if it's legit advice, if it's clickbait and just give some thoughts and opinions on it. Is what she's doing potentially dangerous? Because let's bear in mind if she's... 19 years old and she has an, o an audience of 1.4 million subscribers. I'm going to guess a lot of these are young girls. She gets a lot of views, um, you know, some of them like nine, uh, 900,000 views, 200,000, 100,000. I mean, she gets views, 1.2 million. So this girl gets a lot of views. So I figured what we're going to do is just scroll through the videos and uh, go from there. So, all right, let's uh, look at this, for example how to get a booty in one week. I'm obviously gonna mute any music that's here because of the fact that, oh, okay, copyright story. Hey guys, it's Gabby, and today I'm going to be doing a Brazilian butt lift workout. So this workout will really help tighten your booty, make it plump, make it juicy, you know, make it, <laughs> sounds like it's like a meal. Yeah, we gotta make your booty a meal, not a snack, a meal, all right. Three to 30 seconds each. Fire hydrants, legs, circles, sidekicks, frog legs. It's been too hard to DM everyone, and I feel bad if I don't respond to everyone. So it's just going to be on my story in the highlights so you can access it in the bio. You know what I'm talking about. So, yeah. So this video's had 3.2 million views. Two, one. All right, guys, ready? Fire hydrant extension leg. All right, I don't have to watch more of this. I can promise you guys that's not gonna build an ass. It's exercise, exercise is always good. Is it gonna make you have booty? No. The reality is, the reality is that in order to grow muscle, which is basically a Brazilian butt lift, to have a bigger bum, and the bum is a muscle, the glutes is made up of several muscles. And what you need to do is you need to target them in various different ways through progressive overload, which is through higher reps, shorter tempos, slower reps, shorter rest periods, heavier, lighter, different ways, different techniques. The way I grow my booty is just through a lot of compound lifting. Some of it heavy, some of it not. I vary it around. But doing that is not gonna grow your ass. That's unfortunately the truth. The same as workouts like that is not gonna give you abs. What gives you abs is eating healthy so that the fat goes away. And then obviously you can train abs so they grow, but you can't just do lots of crunches and then expect to get abs that are visible. What makes abs visible is a, a genetics and B diet. Why I eat whatever I want and don't get fat. I really wanted to be skinny and I went so extreme that I only ate 400 calories a day. One day, orange, apple, two cups of popcorn, that's it. Then during the weekend, I would binge. So I think that's kind of important already. Sorry that I'm stopping so soon. Let me just lower this. I hear a similar problem a lot when I talk to clients or when I have consultations with people is that people will tell me that they're only eating like a thousand calories or 1200 calories or 1500 calories a day, but then they're still overweight. And then when you start talking, it's like, okay, well, when you do this, do you end up binging after a few days or on the weekends? And usually the answer is yes. At the end of the day, you're better off eating more calories so that you are fuller for longer 
and you're less likely to binge than heavily restricting and then fall into a cycle of binging because you've been start you've been starving yourself because at the end of the day it kind of comes down to total weekly calories i don't recommend doing like a heavy restriction and then a heavy overeating and the best thing for sustained weight loss for just general physical health and well-being you kind of want to eat you kind of want to eat around the same sort of times every day i know that that's not feasible for a lot of people some people do uh, an intermittent fast some people do eating every three hours some people only eat two or three times a day that doesn't matter too much but don't one day eat like 10,000 calories and then the next day eat 500 technically as long calories cal calories in calories out matters and it works but I can't imagine that's particularly good for the body, for the digestive system and just physical and mental well-being. Because I know that I don't feel good if I eat a large meal and it just wipes me out for the rest of the day. You know, like sometimes it's nice, don't get me wrong, on Sunday I made a, tur I made a German feast. I did an Oktoberfest, so definitely go and check that out. Uh, it's on my second channel, I'll link it down below. The food was delicious. I ate a lot, around 2700 calories in one meal. It was absolutely worth it. Would I do it again on a regular basis? No, absolutely not. I'm just back to eating my normal, regular, healthy meals. But let's get back to see what she's saying. So guys, I'm gonna be telling you guys how I eat whatever I want. Currently eating my second bowl of yogurt parfait right now, yes. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you know I eat this all the time, it's so good. I remember when I was trying to lose weight, I would always read, oh, you have to be in a calorie deficit, you need to be counting your calories. Honestly, the second I stopped counting calories is when I finally lost the weight and I finally was able to be free and enjoy my life. Because I would literally count every calorie, like I would measure everything, exact cup of yogurt, exact tablespoon, exact tablespoon of oil, and I know I don't know if this girl has had a history of eating disorders. Um, from what I can see, she seems to have been a dancer, so there is a likelihood that maybe that is the case. There are certain sports, certain endeavors where things like that, unfortunately, are more prevalent. Counting calories does work, obviously, but if for her it kind of made her obsessive and she maybe had a tendency to undereat, which can happen when we are too focused on the calories. I wouldn't recommend it for somebody that is morbidly obese, but if you're naturally slender, then sometimes it is good to try and intuitive eating um i do in general necessarily not i don't necessarily agree with intuitive eating but i can see how it can work for some people it looks like it maybe worked for her which is good but then at the same time is it did she need to lose more weight i'm not sure is she eating even less now than she was before again i don't know a lot of websites say oh here's how to lose weight eat a thousand two hundred calories i just don't believe that that's the right way you know cutting such low calories is not good for you so don't focus on the calories focus on what you consume that that's what's important i went on instagram Honestly, that's a very, very good tip of hers. Calories actually, calories do matter, but the quality of the calorie matters too. So you can tell me what you want. Eating a thousand calories of fast food is not as good as eating a thousand calories of home cooked, healthy, whole meal, whole food ingredients. I, whole meal, I don't know why I said whole meal, whole food ingredients. I, I don't care, a calorie is a calorie, I get that, but one, one type of calorie is gonna make you feel a lot better than another calorie. There's also a myriad of potential side effects associated to eating processed foods, eating processed carbohydrates, trans fats, etc. So there is plenty of literature out there on that. That's not my opinion, that's actual fact. Yes, I think if you're gonna eat food, maybe if you're struggling to lose weight, maybe just try and tidy up before you count calories, before you restrict, try and eat healthier, try and consume more lean proteins, try and cut back on the snacking, try and cut back on the eating out, try and actually cook your own food and see how that goes because often the problem is is that foods that are convenient, that are takeout, that are easy access, that are junk food, it is usually a lot more calorically dense because it's meant to taste nice it's meant we are meant to overeat on it and it's very easy to overeat on i can assure you that overeating on like chicken breasts and i always said chicken and broccoli and I, i'm being i'm being hyper i'm being um hyperbolic when i say that but try and overeat on chicken breast try and overeat on sweet potato try and overeat on i don't know like what do you want to have with that? I don't know, some tahini over it or something like that. Serving of vegetables, I can assure you, you can, you, you'll probably max out on like five to 800 calories in a meal as opposed to eating two and a half thousand in one sitting. It's very hard to consume these sources of food, just the whole foods in large quantities. Of course, somebody, people can do it, it's, but it's a lot harder. Instagram and asked you guys to open up to me about your struggles with weight loss. And I got so many responses, but what was crazy is that you guys all had the same problems. I'm obsessed with counting calories. Is it healthy? 
I've always been insecure about my body. It's really hard for me to stay consistent with good eating habits. I'm 17 and I've been dealing with this mentality for about a year now. I want to have a healthy balance. Even my friends who I would never think went through this opened up to me about their struggles. So I really think it's amazing that we're all going through the same thing and we can all get through it together. As you guys know, that's really nice of her to share this. I'm surprised. I, I wasn't too sure what I was going to think about this girl. Maybe this is a, a bad video to pick. But actually what she's doing here is really good. She's showing that what people are struggling with and the feelings that they're experiencing, she is not alone in. They are not That they are not alone in that. That is actually very normal. And it is very normal. Consistency and staying on top of healthy eating habits it comes with time and it's also being balanced allow yourself sometimes to have some nice food allow yourself to have that chocolate bar allow yourself to go out for a meal with friends it's just think about the long term think about long term health what is going to make you feel good in the long term and what's going to make you feel good is probably eating healthy for the most part like 80 percent of the time that allows 20% of the time for you to just eat what you want, enjoy yourself, go out for meals, don't worry about calories, don't count calories. And also bear in mind, if you are super morbidly obese, you might have to count calories until you get to a healthy weight until until and, and until you have improved your relationship with food, until you have improved your understanding of what's actually fuel for the body and what's just want. There's a difference between needing food and wanting food. Um, you don't ever need junk food. You always want junk food. So try it. Try that. Like some people do need to count calories and some people don't. Some people need to count calories because maybe they naturally under eat. So intuitive eating, great approach. Does it work for everybody? No, it doesn't. Um, it's. I think it's very hard to sometimes get to a place of eating intuitively. I did a reaction the other day to Stephanie Bottomore and she was saying how whenever she's anxious, she does. she's not in tune with her hunger cues. So I think intuitive eating is great and it can work absolutely for some people but also just bear in mind that I think it works if you are living in perfect circumstances if that makes sense. Not that life is ever perfect but you get my point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just filter it by the highest viewed and let's see what we can do there. Sexy arms workout. Hey guys it's Gabby and today I'm doing a super intense arm workout. I was shaking during this workout. I wanted to quit, but man, I powered through. Um, I really think it will help you guys get rid of your arm fat and make you have super sexy arms super fast. So here's the workout list. If you guys want it, I will give it to you on Instagram. Just DM me. Workout. Let's get those sexy arms. So we are starting out with arm circles. You want to keep this tight? All right, arm circles is not going to give you enough toned arms. Um, don't want to burst anybody's bubble, but that's never going to happen. Little and fast. It's going to get rid We're going to go a little fast because we're trying to push it. <laughs> Keep going, guys. I don't need to look at any more of her workouts because the workouts, especially for a period of only five minutes, six minutes, it's not going to do anything. It's better than doing nothing, I guess, but the reality is, is they're not going to tone you, especially in a week. Um, if if she, if there's anything that can make you change your body drastically in a week, trust me, that person would have capitalized on it by now and will be a multi, multi-millionaire. I suppose there's plenty of fitness people that are multi-millionaires or at least millionaires by exploiting this thought process. I'm here to just break those dreams and bring you back to reality that you can't really do anything in a week to drastically change your uh, change your physique unless it's sort of an operation anyways i really just wanted to make this video because i know a lot of you guys struggle with maintaining your weight i have seen countless posts like 2019 no sugar no carbs I'm gonna be super healthy like no that's not healthy like everyone's like I'm going on this diet everyone does it every year it's exactly what I did yeah so the thing that is a contradiction here in her channel is that on the one side she's doing all of these quick results workouts do this for five minutes for two weeks and you'll look amazing at the same time she's saying don't do diets or don't restrict which is I like that message but I don't like her fitness content i think um i understand why she does it because she clearly makes a lot of money from doing it right there's a lot of views in there but the fitness content of quick results definitely contradicts the whole intuitive eating eat more don't restrict calories don't eat 400 calories 
in my opinion. Let me tell you why that's not gonna work and let me tell you why you really should not do that. Because I've gone down the same road and I remember last year I was so pressured, like I really wanted to be skinny and I went so extreme that I only ate 400 calories a day. One day, orange, apple, two cups of popcorn, that's it. Next day, literally just three bowls of cereal. That's it. Like, are you kidding me? And she basically gave herself an eating disorder. So it's nice to see that at least she's overcome that, that part of it, because it's sad to see because she's a young girl and she doesn't need to do that to herself, destroy her life like that. And I would binge. When you deprive your body of basic nutrients, carbs, sugars, fats, you, you're just gonna binge on the most high calorie foods possible. Junk food, pizza, ice creams, brownies, like the worst food possible because that's, your body's like, I need food, so I'm just gonna pick the thing that has the most calories so I don't die or starve myself. Anyone, when they're just trying to lose weight, they just like, I wanna lose 10 pounds in a week. But honestly, that's, that's not gonna happen. And if it does happen, you're gonna gain it back immediately because it's interesting that she's saying that based on all the videos, look at all the workout videos we are seeing here. Her a large percentage, and in fact her most popular videos, are workout videos. So it's a shame that she's so mature and so... That she's giving such good advice that things like that, that losing 10 pounds in a week is unhealthy and not feasible, not realistic, but at the same time, here we go, flat tummy in a week for within 5 minutes. Because when you deprive your body that hard, that fast, your metabolism slows down, first of all. Second off, you're going to break and you're going to binge. I suggest that you guys read some articles about yo-yo dieting, but one in three dieters ends up heavier than before they dieted. Even if you keep it off for a month, people gain it. Yeah, so this is why people should make it a lifestyle change so they don't yo-yo too much. A diet doesn't work. A lifestyle change is more likely to work because it's a completely different mindset. You're eating for a purpose, you're eating for uh, for health, as opposed to, oh, I just want to lose 10 pounds so I look good in a bikini. Back Because the diets are just not sustainable, it's not healthy, it's not enjoyable, people hate what they're eating, and it's just a constant cycle of starving, binging, starving, binging. You don't want to do that. I've done that. It's, it's awful. Many models this year on Instagram have opened up about their struggles with their eating disorders and the pressures of being skinny. I was booking amazing shows, but after fainting one night in my apartment while preparing one of my very low-cal meals, 20 pieces of steamed edamame, I called it quits with my diet. I started eating nearly a full bag of almonds, which turned into eating full-size meals, which turned into a full binge. I craved every single food you can imagine, and I couldn't control my urges. Don't so this is where, just jumping back to Stephanie Buttermore, this is where that um, all-in approach comes from. It is basically meant to stop people that have had eating disorders. It gets to a point where they have reached society which is very hard if you've been in a very long period of starvation because you, you don't ever feel full up i don't know what necessarily what the health complications are with that especially when there's a lot of rapid weight gain just like rapid weight loss neither is good for the body sustained is better but then it seems to work so no and that is, i don't say necessarily for her but it's like a very it's a fairly well used technique with uh, eating disorder recovery don't you just want to be able to eat whatever you want go out with your friends not worry about like Oh, I don't know if I can eat that. I don't know if I can have dinner. Like, that is not normal. We should all be able to eat three meals a day, snacks, have fun, enjoy ourselves, and not worry about, like, this constant cycle of starving and binging and blah, blah, blah. So that's really what this series is going to be about because I had an extreme transformation. I went from eating 400 calories to about 2,000 right now. I don't even count. Like, I, I used to count every calorie. Like, I counted a calorie in a Tic Tac. So like I said, January 19th, this was my body when I was binging and starving versus my body now, January 22nd. I mean, it's not about body, but... It's not a huge difference. She's wearing trousers that are a little bit too small here and there. She's wearing high-waisted knickers. So I can do transformations like that also. But it's hard to say um, if the body is honestly that much different. All right, let's finish this off with uh, what I eat today. Because I'm kind of curious to see what she is eating now. And obviously she's eating, from what I understand, more balanced. And uh, I'll, I'll wrap the video up.
So all the recipes that I'm showing you guys today are from Lifesome. I've been using this app. It's amazing. And if you're a mediocre cook and not really good at making anything, they got you because the recipes are so simple and you can really make anything taste good and all the recipes taste good. So y'all should, you know, go on Lifesome if you lack creativity in the cooking field because they have millions of recipes that are beautiful and yummy and I'm going to be showing you guys what I eat in a day. Let's get it. I think it's really important to try and also be adventurous in the kitchen when you're going on a healthy eating journey because healthy food is tasty it's just a lot of it comes down to just being creative with recipes and thinking a little bit outside the box it doesn't have to be bland and boring it can be very nice it's just try and think of what your favorite foods are and from fast food and maybe look up recipes as to how you can make these at home healthier one of my favorites is the egg white omelet with spinach and tomato and it's cooked and ready to eat Yes. I think that I'm pretty sure there are studies out there that suggest that eating a high protein breakfast can definitely help with general satiety, general satiety, satiation throughout the day. Uh, just because protein is more filling, it does keep the insulin levels more stable. Or if you're going to have a carbohydrate, have a complex carbohydrate, something that doesn't spike the insulin as much as I don't know, like a sugary cereal. Next, we make the pizza. Oh yes, get it, get it, get it. So it shows us all the ingredients. She is eating very low calories so far. We're like not even on 500. Now this is what I call perfection. Cook. There's no cheese on it. I would not enjoy that pizza. But using a wrap for a base is probably a good alternative. You can probably do. This is a good idea. You know, obviously eating a whole pizza is going to be like two to three thousand calories. You're eating a pizza here that's three to four hundred calories. So yeah, this is a good alternative. However, I'll be interested to see what else she's gonna eat because she's eating only 500 calories so far today. Next, we are gonna be making a shrimp salad with an avocado crema. Yes, I really be that queen. Again, very low calories. And now we plate. It looks really beautiful. It does look very delicious, but food like that is not very filling. Wow, am I just, should I like try out for Master Chef? Like Gordon Ramsay, hit me up, you know? Like I'm, I'm slaying the game here. Lastly, we be making a dessert, a healthy chocolate yogurt. It She's eating less than a thousand calories, or around a thousand calories in a day. <laughs> also, we're gonna add some nuts, finely chopped ones, and some fruit to top it. And now it looks- Alright, so what's my thought? I think she does eat healthy, she needs to eat more calories. She's definitely not eating 1500 to 2000 based on what she's shown here. Um, this What I Eat In A Day video was filmed a month before her I ate 400 calories a day where she says she's eating a lot more than that. Maybe since she filmed that first video, uh, the, well, the, maybe since she filmed that What I Eat In A Day video, she's eating more. I'm not too sure, but she's definitely not eating 1500 to 2000 calories. She's barely scratching a thousand. I don't know how tall she is. I don't know what her energy output is. A thousand calories is low for most people, but if you're a very short female that doesn't exercise a lot, you can probably get away with eating like a thousand, twelve hundred calories. Eating two thousand calories for a woman is usually quite a lot, um, unless you know if you exercise a lot. I'm five seven and I weigh around eighty kilos, seventy eight kilos, so I'm around. Uh, I don't know, like 170 pounds, 180 pounds, something like that. I train a lot. I'm very muscular. I'm leanish. I'll probably say around 20, 22% body fat, probably more like 22 at the moment. I need to, I train a lot as well. So my caloric intake is going to be a lot more yet. I eat around 2300, 2500, sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less. I usually end up around 2500 ish, a little bit more, a little bit less. That's my sort of natural go to. And I. I'm okay at that. I have a healthy level of body fat and I'm strong enough to lift. So for a normal woman where the average for females is like five food four, to eat 2000 calories a day when they don't exercise, it's too much. It is simply too much. I like some of the things she's saying. At the same time, I think there is some issues with the contradiction in like, oh, here's quick results, get rid of body fat, like get rid of belly fat, but then at the same time, Eat all the calories and don't worry about belly fat. It's a bit like that. And let me know what you thought. Let me know if you like this video, if you like this type of content, if you want me to do more of these reviews on channels and I can just find out more of them because obviously there's a plethora of 
YouTube videos out there. Also, just make sure you're subscribed and that you have the bell turned on if you're interested to see my videos. Um, I'm, I've get, I'm getting the feeling that I am maybe falling out of the algorithm. Maybe I've been a little bit shadow banned. I'm not getting as many views as I should be getting on certain videos where I know my rough, my rough average is. So just make sure that if you do want to see my content that all of that is in place so you don't miss my next upload. Comment, like, subscribe, um, dislike the video. If you don't like it, let me know why you didn't like it and then maybe I can learn from that and maybe I'll just disagree with you and that's cool too. On that note, I am going to go. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.